Now, just out of sheer and utter curiosity, when you all hear that I'm from Canada, do you automatically assume that I just play hockey in my spare time and ride a polar bear to work, which obviously wouldn't be happening right now because of the virus, so we have to stay home in our igloos? Um, or do you all just automatically assume that I drink maple syrup? Because I'm, I'm seriously, seriously wondering, because most of them are true. <laughs> Oh yeah, that last one, that last one was true. This stuff is absolutely delicious. But welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope you guys are all doing well wherever you are in the world. And welcome to, I'm wearing the exact same shirt as I was yesterday. But none of you would have known that if I didn't tell you. So I probably shouldn't have told you. Now, a while back in the early goings of this very YouTube channel, I made a video voicing my displeasures about the two Canadian boys in Formula One. And I was a bit harsh on the two of them. I was a bit, I was a bit mean. I made a video a while back also updating my thoughts on the two. I made one about Lance Stroll. I'll link it in the card right up above. You can go and watch that. Come back and watch this one. Welcome back. I know you didn't actually go watch it. No one ever does that when a YouTuber asks. They just, they just keep watching the same. So let's just move on with this one. But since I made the video about renewing Lance Stroll, I thought it would only be fair if I went ahead and redeemed my thoughts about Nicholas Latifi. Because I was like really harsh towards the guy for absolutely no good reason. So that, that was my best impression of Nicholas Latifi and Lance Stroll's personalities combined into one. I think I did pretty well in expecting my nomination for an Academy Award any minute now, according to my watch. Now, can we just really quick acknowledge the fact that how terrible early quarantine Zach Productions quality was? Cause like, that just doesn't look good. But I really just wanted to make this video to apologize to the guy because I actually went a bit too hard on him, I think. And I actually want to make amends because I feel like I kind of like him now. <laughs> what do you know? Now, one of my main criticisms of both of the Canadian drivers and Nicholas in particular is that he had next to no personality in press conferences. And I could not have been any more wrong about that. This dude is so joyous, so happy, always joking and laughing around in press conferences and for media interviews. Like, it, it's actually shocking how wrong I was. A few words in your own language. My own language is English. <laughs> That's what, I'm being told that one. But do a bit of French. Do a bit of French. I, I don't speak French good enough yet. <laughs> You're all right. I speak Canadian, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you tell someone tell me that? Yeah. But anyway, I'll come to you. Oh no. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Right. Oh, I got it. I got it. No, oh, but you, you can't press it and then wait. What? Yeah, no, you, you said, you said, whenever uh, we put... Wait, let me see again. Uh, Unbelievable. Well, first things first, gonna put the chef hat on here. I wanted to show off my, my dough tossing skills, but they're already kind of cooked. Just those few clips alone destroy any argument I had about him having no personality, and it shows. Now, yes, of course, you could draw the argument that I probably didn't do enough research for that video to actually understand the dude's personality. And sure, you'd probably have somewhat of an argument on your hands. But I actually don't think that's the whole problem here. As I've said so many times on this channel, and I will continue to say until the problem is fixed, Formula One is not covered in Canada the same way that it's covered in Europe. We basically just get highlight packages of the race. They talk about it for about two minutes. And that's about it. They essentially just kind of gloss over it, get the bare minimum of analysis across, and then move on. Because frankly, the sport just isn't that big in Canada. And to be completely honest with you, they only really ever cover Lance when they're talking about the Canadians in the sport, and they kind of just forget completely about Nick. And sure, that could likely be because he's in an underperforming car, not fighting for world championships. But when it comes to Canadians playing in worldwide sports like this, unnamed Canadian broadcaster. Hone in on those young Canadian talents that even if they're performing poorly, they still cover them. But the fact of the matter is, I have as many friends in my life that love and are passionate about Formula One as there are F1 drivers from Canada. I, I have two, I have two friends that love Formula One. That's it. 
And quite honestly, as long as that stays the same, this problem with Formula One and its popularity in Canada will continue to persist no matter what. And of course, I do appreciate and empathize with the fact that Formula One has a very high barrier to entry. It's not quite as easy as watching a hockey game and understanding what's going on because it's all just right in front of you. There's so much complexity and strategy and so many more small things you have to learn to really love and understand the sport. And on top of that, at least in my time zone where Toronto is, races start at about 9 a.m. for European and 3 a.m. for all the Asian and Middle Eastern countries. So that's already not doing very well. That's basically like going up to someone and saying, hey, this show is fantastic. It's hilarious. You're going to love it. But the first season is about 20 episodes long. So just kind of you have to force yourself through that. The episodes are an hour long each and it really doesn't pick up actually until season five. But, but eventually you'll stick with it and like it. That is essentially the mindset that someone has when they're looking at trying to get into Formula One. It's just too much for them to have to deal with and process. And not a lot of people these days have time for that. So the fact of the matter is it is going to be extremely difficult to grow the popularity of this sport in the Great White North outside of Quebec who already has a race. But it's not impossible. If you're a Canadian out there watching this, you love Formula One and you're the only person you know that is the same way that you are, show them DTS, have them go through seasons one and two of Drive to Survive, give them time to get up to speed with the sport and then enjoy it with them when the season starts in just a few months time. But that's all I have for you this week. I hope you all enjoyed watching this one as much as I enjoyed making it. Feel free to leave a comment down below where you think the two Canadian boys are going to end up at the final standings of the season. If you want to know my take on that, I'll leave a card up above to my 2021 predictions. You can see where I put the two of them in the final standings. But feel free to lick the stamp, send that subscribe button down below, drop a like if you really liked it, and don't miss the apex.